In this episode, we interview one of the most inspirational music marketers in the game, and boy, he's revealed some of the things that he's seen people behind the scenes that look like they're winning, that he's working with, and what they're doing, but it's not hitting like you think it is, and how you can avoid it yourself. And on top of that, like the amount of time that it usually takes artists to blow up. The ones he's working with successfully, and it looks like it's happening fast, was really going on behind the scenes. If you want to know, check this episode out. What's up, what's up, what's up? I'm Brand Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. And you can catch us everywhere on YouTube, Spotify, wherever we stream our podcast. And if you know, when we do this intro, that means we got an interview. Because we only say this for interviews when we have dope people on today. And today, man, we have a great creative currency conversation because we have one of the leading voices on the interwebs when it comes to music marketing like dope advice and i would say probably like the source when in terms of one of the in individuals in terms of inspiration uh, he really knows this stuff been watching him for a while this individual this sir that we are about to speak with today goes by the name of promo god appreciate you hopping on man, yeah, thank you, man. what's up everyone how you guys doing Hey, great, 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 man. I feel like this is actually a long overdue conversation on the pod. Um, and today, you know, I really just want to give some game, man. You've been working, like literally doing this for real, for real. You know, a lot of people just drop quotes, but you actually do marketing for real. You're not just sitting in a room coming up with great thoughts, even though the thoughts are great. They will be helpful one way or another. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think it makes a difference. And you can tell over time when somebody actually does work. So... I want to start off with a quote of yours. We're going to be doing multiple quotes. That's going to be the themes of the podcast because you dropped so many great ones on, uh, well, Twitter, but then you put them on IG. If you're not willing to work on your music career for four to five years for free, don't get, don't get, no, don't expect to get paid from it. That's an interesting thought. And I feel like that's a semi-controversial thought for some people. I would like to hear you to expand on that. Um, just in general, like every artist that I've worked with that has uh, any established fan base, a lot of them prior to get into that place were investing a lot of money and just kind of doing a lot of different things for free just to kind of get the exposure as far as like collaborating, you know, networking, um, just putting out content, just um, consistently um, making music and putting it in front of people that need to see it until the point um, they get to the point where their music takes off and they have a fan base. So if you're an artist and you're not willing to work a couple years, four or five years for free, um, it, you probably won't get to the point where people want to pay you for, for the content that you put out and, and the music that you put out. If that makes sense. What do you say to the people who say, but man, look at all these other industries and, or even point to another artist or two that started popping and moving along faster and they are getting paid a good amount a lot of times those people have people investing in them a lot of money behind the scenes invested in them and that's the main reason why a lot of those artists blow up out of nowhere i'm not saying it's not possible to blow up in a short period of time without like getting paid right away i'm just saying it's very rare because in most cases where you do have have someone that seems like they're coming out of nowhere and blowing up and, and you know, getting paid overnight. In most cases, a lot of times those artists were grinding behind the scenes um, where people didn't see them for a long time until they got to that point. And on top of that, and on top of that, they have people that are invested in them because I work with a lot of artists that, you know, people would might think fit in that um, kind of frame, but a lot of them have investors behind the scenes investing you know tens of thousands of dollars into their social media and, and just marketing in general mm. <clears throat> okay so if i'm an indie and i don't have those guys what should i be doing in those four to five years to make sure so, you know go sorry <clears throat> so if you're independent and you don't have uh the funds to kind of you know invest in, in yourself and, and get to the next level what you have to do is in my opinion, and I know a lot of people don't like this because I've seen this work for a lot of people, but you have to find something else that you're, you're really good at as far as music, and you have to figure out how to monetize that. And it could be um, content on social media, it could be, con you know, it could be vlogs, it could be 
um, any sort of content where you're posting, you're making content based around something else that you're interested in and you're putting out a lot of content based around that topic to get people behind you and, you know, uh, to know about you as a brand and you kind of like monetize that as well and grow your fan base with that, with the other type of content that you're making. Um, and as you're monetizing and making money, you know, let's just say like you're into traveling or you're into fitness, you know, um, based around those things out there and you're using that to grow your music and kind of monetize your audience. If that, if that makes sense. Yeah, man. I love hearing that because I think it's actually underrated. Like, I think a lot of people, when they hear anything other than music specifically, they think, oh, man, I don't want to get lost in the sauce. I only want people to think about me one way and I don't want to get trapped in this fitness brand or insert whatever other brand. But we're talking about being indie. And, you know, do you want to be caught up in whatever kind of work you currently have or would you be happy doing something that does contribute to your overall brand and you can live off of that until you start making like money, money from the music. Because I know so many people. I think the problem is a lot of artists think like if they do something like that, it's final. That's what they're going to be known as. But the thing is you have so much time, like you can do something for 10 years and then, you know, uh, advance to the next level and not do like, like I can put out content right now for 10 years, like the way I'm doing. And then one day I can upgrade to, you know, having a full show or something like that and not do that to the point, you know, anymore. So if you wanted to, like, graduate from that type of artist or an artist that's, you know, considered a TikToker or YouTuber, you can always graduate from that position, um, especially like once you get to the point where you're making some money and you're able to make some investments and, uh, you know, you, you can find other things to do as an artist besides just posting content and getting to the point even though i wouldn't recommend that like if, if something's working for you i would keep doing it but if you're an artist like for example a lot of um artists came out making mixtapes or doing freestyles and, and stuff like that or rap battling just to kind of get their name and once they got their name um they kind of stopped doing those things they were they were just focused on the music and their career yeah yeah i think people would be surprised if they found out how many of these artists that they know and only primarily think of as music people, like how long it took them to really make money from music in a serious way. Where it's like, oh yeah, no, I really, I was making most of my money off of like sponsorship deals due to the brand that I built even around my music, right? Let's just say it's, an, but it's a niche brand and it showed clearly to other brands that I'm valuable to reach this type of audience. So really I'm making money from the br the brands. They look at me as a rapper because they're looking for a rapper to be a part of their campaign or something like that. But the music directly, it's usually going to come after even things like that. Right. And if the music, like a lot of artists don't want to be labeled, you know, TikTokers and YouTubers, but if the music is good, it's doesn't really matter how you get the exposure, you know, it, it's going to take off if people like the music. It's definitely going to grow and, and get to the point where it needs to be. Bro, like you said, it's only a moment in time at the end of the day, right? Like right. the only reason you won't last if the talent isn't there to go past that moment. I think that's what people are scared of. They don't know if they actually had the talent to get to that next moment. Yeah, I agree. You know, if, if you want to, um, you know, if you, if you want people to know about you and you know and you want to get your music to next level you can't expect to kind of start out where a lot of the established artists are where they're just releasing music and people are listening especially in the, in the social media era you know a lot of uh, the people that succeed these days are the people that people feel connected to and the best way to do that is by putting out content and you know getting on youtube going live and just engaging with your audience let me take a quick second to say, if you're looking for a music distributor that cares about educating their artists so they can get in a better position, you should check out Two Loss because every single Monday they have office hours where they bring on dope people in the industry to hop on calls, give artists insights on the future of the music industry and answer some of the questions they have going on in their personal careers. So if you aren't a user of Two Loss or just want to have a little bit more information about them, Go to Two Lost on Instagram. That's T O O L O S T, Two Lost on Instagram, and it'll take you to everything you need to see, inform you about the sessions, and more. Back to this episode. For sure, man. Let's get to your second tweet that I, we want to talk about. You said 
being fancy won't attract more fans. A lot of artists think that if they pay for a big budget video and record at a big budget studio, their song will yield more results. But the truth is, if it's not authentic, it won't make a difference. Right. So I've seen people, I've seen people invest, you know, tens of thousands into uh, videos and studios and, and, you know, expect for their song to kind of blow up when they release the video. But the truth is, if people don't connect to your story or people don't believe the type of music that you're making, it doesn't matter how much you invest in it is not going to take off. If you look at like someone like XXX Tentacion, for example, his biggest song that the first song that blew up, it wasn't even mixed and mastered, you know, but people felt connected to it. They liked it. They, they liked the energy and, and it took off. So honestly, as an artist, you don't want to put a lot of money into creating your product and creating uh, the videos. You want to, you want to try to limit your spend in there so you can make as much uh, content as you can. Uh, and, and, you know, with the less amount of money, um, but yeah, just in, in my opinion, I don't think anyone should, you know, in, invest a lot of money into studio time or a music video and, and think that that's automatically automatically going to get them the results. If you want people to get behind your music, they have to connect with your story or believe in the stuff that you're saying. You know, and that, a lot of that comes with the image and, um, you know, just who you are as an artist, like the, the kind of brand you put out. But uh, yeah, that's technically what I think. Yeah, no, that's a good point because I think a lot of artists conflate quality with success. And like you said, like we've seen um, what we consider to be like low quality variations of things pushed through because the music attached to it was so good. I mean, we we were talking about this. Like we've seen have videos from clients that would be visually one of the worst videos we've ever seen, but the song behind it is great. You know, and it works out over a, a video where I don't know if you remember that one guy that had that crazy video that we didn't want to work. I don't know if you remember that, but you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you know, and we've seen the exact opposite right where it's like, okay, this is amazing. It looks crazy, but there still isn't enough here to make it go. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. right. Like that, that happens to me all the time. Like I have people that have like great uh, music, great videos, visuals are crazy, but uh, it doesn't connect with someone who's just doing a freestyle live from like a, you know, a room that doesn't even have lighting. It's like, it, it's crazy just because people feel connected to it and, um, you know, or believe in the artist, you know, because a lot of times people, they want to see, uh, like, people want to, music is more like a lifestyle these days. It's not just like a product to me. I, I think like, it's not just like something you can um, invest in and just kind of, you know, pay for the best stuff and, and make it blow it's more like a lifestyle these days. If you look at all the artists, especially in the hip hop uh, genre, a lot of the people that are taken off, it's like their 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 image, their, the videos they put out, the music they put out, it's all uh, promoting a certain lifestyle that people want to be a part of or feel connected to in some way. So, you know, if you want if you want people to connect with you and uh, you know make and and as long as it's authentic, you know, and, and people connect with it, I feel like it'll take off over something that's overproduced and watered down. Bro, I was just having a conversation. This is what I was telling you about before, uh, early on today, Ja'Cory. Um, there, there's an artist that has a certain brand that his genre is a little bit more gritty. You know what I mean? It's a little bit more street, right? And he's working with some people who like a lot more or have a creative eye, a great creative eye, but it's coming from a different direction and they don't understand his fan base and where he's from. Cause it's, you have to actually be from that life to understand it a little bit more or at least legitimately study it. And I was just able to say, look, man, your audience isn't going to mess with that. It's a cool video. They'll like, they might respect the creativity of how you present it, but it doesn't do much for you at all in the realm of authenticity and if you want an example of street and, and just feeling authentic and how much impact it has in that category, you can look no further than Chief Keef don't like. Yeah, good point. Like, uh, like uh, that uh, video, Gucci video, just like dudes in the room, it was raw as it can be. Looked like it was shot on the, like, on the MacBook cam, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But it just felt so 
Like these all these dudes all shirtless or whatever, jumping up and down, yeah. like looking how they looked or whatever. Like for that felt like authentic. Like it's like, yeah, y'all don't even look like y'all have the money to have uh uh well to have like the thought out music video or y'all don't we don't even see y'all as that a, a Pharrell creative. Like don't be a Chief Keith dude in the gutter like in like at ground zero and your video looks like Pharrell put it on. You get what I mean? Like right. and I think right. people don't understand that. And they get caught up. Go ahead, you have something you're about to say? I mean, I see that all the time where, like, some videos seems like someone invested hundreds of thousands of dollars into it. And it only gets, you know, it still gets like a million views, but it's like a lot was put behind it in order to get that one million views. And, or, you know, and still people are not messing with it, you know. And I know a lot of examples. I don't want to say names. But then at the end of the day, I have other people that I work with and that call me and they're like, they're they're barely investing in cover art or the music is good. You know, people feel connected to the music and literally they're not there. You know, once they have people connected to them and uh, listening to their music and, and, and in a way where I don't know if you guys heard of Superstar Pride. You ever heard of that artist Superstar Pride? Kind of like what he was doing in, uh, on TikTok. He was just kind of freestyling in the room, just putting out um, videos, connecting with his audience, putting it in front of people that like it. And, and eventually, you know, it took off. Um, but, yeah, to go back to your point, I don't I don't think it's necessary to, and, and, you know, you don't want to look like, like you said, a, a video where it, it's highly high quality and looks creative. And, and that's not what your audience is looking for. They're looking for something more raw. You know what? I think I know what the problem is. I think that most artists get caught up sometimes living their dream instead of selling their vision as an artist. So you you came up seeing yourself as this superstar, right, on the screen, and now that you have a budget and the ability to put yourself in a high quality video to look like you have a lot of money, to look famous, right? You're creating that. All right, but you're not actually selling the art itself, right? The authentic authenticity of mm -hmm. what you're trying to push itself. So instead, it comes more, it comes off more like, oh, this daughter felt like she wanted to be Lady Gaga for the day, so rich daddy like paid for her to dress up fancy, get all the videographers. That's what it feels like. You might not be a daughter, 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 daddy convert, um, like type of situation. You saved your money. You might be literally still broke or whatever but you just dressed up it feels like you're playing dress up a character you know what like i mean character. that's and that's the problem fans want to see the progress you can't look like you can't look like someone you know who's just goes from zero to 100 like it's very rare unless there's a lot of money behind it and it's like very well strategically planned out you know like yeah. you can't like me for example if i just started putting on jewelry and all this stuff and and start talking to my audience, it, it you know, it'll look different. They'd be like, what the heck is going on? You know, like people want to, people don't want to see you go from zero to hundred. They want to see progress. Like how'd you get from point A to point B to point C? I think people want to see all that these days. And you know, it's not like you cut, it's very rare that an artist is going to be able to come out of nowhere and just, you know, like Lil Nas X and go from zero to hundred, you know, overnight, even though he was marketing his music with uh, tweets and stuff like that for a long time. But it's very rare that you have those artists where they just, you know, go from a zero to hundred and look like, you know, that, like they said, they, you know, like they're playing dress up and, and you know, from overnight. I think people want to see the progress. And even with him, people got to see the pro progress. It happened faster, but people were aware. Oh, there was this guy who was on Twitter. Oh, like this song is in process of blowing up, and now there's a story of how the song became big. Like they were able to see the story. It happened like in a hyperbolic chamber, but at least it was there for people. Mm -hmm. To, to experience, but you just pop up. Yeah, you skip steps. It doesn't really work, man. Like, I think it's, it's like, let's not play dress up. What is the art itself? And then create a video that matches the art at the very least. Because some people mm -hmm. might need a little bit more money to execute their videos creatively, but make sure the more money you're putting into it has to do with communicating the art in a better way, not just looking cooler. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I agree. Yeah, because a lot of people have like a perception and just this idea of what an artist should be, you know, and I think a lot they get it a lot from like just watching mainstream musicians and, and stuff like that. 
or how they grew up to the you know listening to the artists they that listen to but the truth is you know you can't um take what what you see is work for someone else or that's working for someone else i think a lot of that comes from um i think a lot of that thinking comes from artists thinking if they look like an artist that's successful they're going to be successful too you know even though that those artists didn't just go from zero to that to 100 in that moment you know there was a lot of progress mm -hmm. now here's another tweet you have man well actually i don't think this was officially a tweet you might have just black screened this on ig but <laughs> Making a song that 1,000 fans listen to for the rest of their life is more profitable than making a song a million people only listen to once. Don't chase the short-term success. Focus on the long-term success. Avoid trends. Make timeless music. What say you? Uh, yeah, so um, a lot these days, music, because, you know, on the radio days, if you were to make a, a song that, you felt like, um, you know, everyone would like that would make more sense because everyone is, um, you know, listening to the same radios and it's, it's, it's kind of like the same uh, programming. But with social media and how things are, everything's kind of spread out and um, everyone's kind of niche based and everyone just kind of finds what they like and they just listen to that over and over and over again. You know, and if you're an artist and you find, um, you know, your audience and you find that little community of people could be 30,000 to 100,000 people that listen to your music over and over again that really like it. If you add up the numbers over time, you get more views and streams like that, you know, and especially even if it's 150,000 people that listen, you know, like really like the song and then, you know, they save it and listen to it forever. Like that'll equate to more streams than you going for people who, who you think, you know, just for everyone to think that the song is if you're promoting to everyone and they all think it's okay it's not going to really take off but if you promote it to a group of people that think the music is great and they listen to it over and over again that's usually the type of music that takes off and that's usually what the algorithm is looking to promote you know because they don't want to put something in front of people that they you know think is okay and don't necessarily come back to it. they want to keep pushing um the content in front of people that they keep streaming over and over again. And, and that's kind of like my mentality with that. It's better to find that niche where you're kind of fulfilling a specific audience that a lot of artists aren't necessarily creating content for. You're just one of the few that fulfills that niche. And those people keep listening to your music over and over again. And those are, are usually the artists that end up blowing up anyways too, because people, when you make something that's for everyone, everyone, likes different things and at the same time people have to see other people liking something before they like it too for example like when a lot of these soundcloud rappers came out at first they had a small niche following you know of people that were listening to their music and just um kind of telling people that they were good everyone was telling them like lil pump and you know smoke curb are not good but their fans kept listening to them over and over again and driving up their numbers and eventually everyone else kind of saw that impact and they were, they start kind of becoming fans of it. They were jumping on the bandwagon. So if you want to get to the point where everyone likes your music, you kind of have to start out in a niche where you're fine. You're making music for a small group of people and you're going to have to just keep growing that community. Mm. Yeah, That's a good point too. Cause when you, the way I kind of see it is when you start off in a niche, you develop this core group of people who feel like they know you and you represent them and they fight for you harder, right? Like I think Smoke Purple, Lil Pump are great examples of that because at the time they were basically like counterculture, right? And so the fan base kind of felt like, hey, like you represent where I feel like I'm at in life. So I need to champion you to make sure there's a representation of me and my interests prevalent in the world, right? Versus if you start mass and you start with everyone knowing who you are, then no one knows who you are, right? And they, they don't feel as attached to you or feel like there's a movement to necessarily like ride behind. I agree. I think people want to like identify with something, you know, and if they find someone that, you know, is, is making the, that feels the same way as them and makes the music that they are into, you know, I, I think those are the people that are, are going to have the most success, you know, like, because I've seen artists that, like labels program to, you know, put a lot behind and just push them out in front of everyone. And those artists don't do good at all. Like no one likes their music. Like they, 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 uh, 
edit their videos to where it, it sounds like it'll get mainstream success. Their their songs, they'll mix and master them to make it seem like it, it will get like mainstream success, and it just never works out. I've I don't think I've ever seen that work out for an artist. I've always seen the artists that are successful are always the ones that kind of have a little community and a little niche that they're representing and they're just making music for. And sometimes it gets to the point where that niche grows and grows and those artists become mega superstars. And sometimes it doesn't happen, you know, but at the end of the day, you still get to, you know, make music and get paid for it and, and uh, monetize yourself. I guess that's how I look at it. Yeah. Now that's, that's what to me too is also so interesting about the, um, like a lot of current artists have this sentiment where they feel like they don't want to necessarily speak for others or represent others. They want to be their own individual. And what I a lot of times think artists miss is that a lot of the best artists, um, and definitely I think a lot of the most successful artists are to other people like mirror reflections of them, right? Like I feel like I, I look at you and I see something that is representative of me or my interest in it. And that sentiment, is, at least with the consumer community, has only gotten stronger as more artists and creators have been more um, more upfront about like their own personal interests and other things that they're, they're, they're into besides the music. And so it's like, at this point, it's almost like if you don't represent something or I, I, I can't, I can't look at you and or listen to you and figure out like what you're trying to represent. You're almost, well, I wouldn't say almost, you're, you're literally counter what music fans are looking for today. Right. And if you don't have like, if you don't make content about other things and put it out on social media, no one's going to know who you are unless you have like a big budget and you can run ads and, you know, people are putting you in the background of their videos. You figure out some way to like promote yourself that way. Um, no one's going to talk about you because everyone's on social media. No one's, looking for new music no one goes on spotify unless like they might subscribe to a playlist that they listen to some a song that they haven't heard of but no one's going to search for new artists so as an artist you have to figure out other things about yourself that connect with these people so that they can give your music a chance it's not even necessarily about the content it's just so you can get in front of the people that you want to hear your music and um you know content is one of the best ways to do that uh you know and a lot i've seen a lot of artists um it's got to the point where like it's actually better to release content before you release music like you can build a brand based around who you are and as a person and what you represent before you release music and when you release music people will listen to it if it's good it, it will take off and if it's not you know it's gonna kind of stop where it's at you talked about everybody not liking your music right you you got to be able to connect with a small group of people first and I think when you when you touched on the fact that those people oftentimes end up becoming bigger in the, in the first place, it really is about the career growing in stages, and especially if you're an indie. All right, so we want to think of all think of it almost like a strictly business principle way of doing it. Like you're trying to keep the lights on, you got to keep the lights on to be able to sell some more the next month and to try to grow and to try to hire people, right? And when you are assigned or you have a certain level of investment, you can take more risk. But if you're indie, like it's just about like, what can I do right now to connect and keep the lights on today? I don't have to do a million dollar home run today. I just need to make 5K, 1K, you know, maybe. So today that looks like, oh, I'm connecting with, five people, all right, I'm connecting with 20 people. This small base is my version of keeping the lights on, not like necessarily financially, but just as a career, I'm connecting with enough people, right? And because I do that, that allows me to get to the next stage and have an opportunity to connect with a hundred people, to connect with the next mm -hmm. stage of people. And I think people miss that part, right? It's like, it's not because you're, you need to stay small forever, but connecting with a small base allows you the opportunity to take some swings at connecting with a bigger base. And of course that snowballs over time. Right. That's, that's actually how like marketing, uh, like any, I think that's actually how anyone is getting successful because like, if you look at like what Drake did early on, he came in the scene, he was doing a lot of mixtapes, a lot of like kind of hardcore rap, and just kind of getting his foot in the door. And then when he kind of had that audience that Lil Wayne had behind his music, 
he started kind of expanding on to, you know, the other uh, uh, groups of people, you know, start making music for females and stuff like that and just kind of making pop records and then you know, going on Jimmy Kimmel's like, he slowly like that's the whole point is to find something that you can that that you can connect with and identify with that other people will then you just keep growing that and using that to kind of go to the next stage you know use that to 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 take a swing at the next stage exactly yeah and another thing is everybody says they want to build a cult audience they want to build a cult fan base but they're not willing to do what cults do right and what a cult does is they express very strong opinions you know what that does? That gets rid of all that stuff in the middle, the people who are indifferent. Like, you either hate me or you love me, right? right. And a lot of artists don't want to go through that period where you say you want to do something different. Well, go ahead and present something different enough where there's going to be people who really rock with you. Like Ja'Cory mentioned earlier, they'll fight for you. When those people say they hate you, now I got to decide, oh, shoot, man. Like, either I'm going to fall to their opinion and stop messing with them, all right? or I'm going to fight and tell you why this person is so dope. Right. And now I'm going to start spreading you because I want my team to be bigger. Dang, I'm, I'm tired of fighting the world on Drake's <laughs> behalf. You know what I mean? Telling him that telling people that they're, he's real rap and, and, and Drake isn't soft. So I'm going to bring some other people to recruit and tell them that, <laughs> that, that Drake is that next dude. And eventually your fan base gets bigger. You got a bigger army. And now you're the one you're, you're the army bullying other people mm -hmm. and saying, nah, these people aren't like Drake, which people forget that era. And I thought about Drake because you mentioned him, but people forget that he went through that era, that same type of thing where yep. people felt strongly against him. It's all about it's all about, uh, you know, it's just a step at, you know, one step at a time and just figuring out who, who you, you know, figuring out your lane. And then once you kind of are established in that lane. If you want, you know, some people call that selling out too. Though a lot of people will say that you, um, you know, when you, when you do something like what Drake did, a lot of people will say that you sold out and stuff like that. But you know, at the end of the day, only you know what you want as an artist and where you want to be. So, but you know, you have to you have to figure out all the di different steps, figure out where you fit in, figure out your lane, and just kind of go from there until you you know you can take a swing at the next level. Yeah, man. Like, I feel like people shouldn't worry about selling out because it's really a perception in most cases than the reality in a lot of them. Because like you said, a lot of artists, you're the one who knows whether you're selling out or not. Right. right. You don't even know me all the way, bro. Like, so you don't know. I might have always wanted to do this. This is what I've been working for. You think I'm selling out because you're comparing it to how you saw me at first when I couldn't be all of me. You know what I mean? Right. So and I think that's a that's a big mindset that a lot of artists have is like they they had that plan, you know, like I think Drake had that plan from the beginning, you know, he, he knew what he wanted and he knew how he was going to get it. So and I think if artists look at some even though it's not relevant to today's day and age, because it was like a mixtape era and stuff like that. But if you look at just what any artist is, is, is uh, doing that has um, a following right now, you know, they all kind of came from they all had a little niche that they were fulfilling and then once they got that niche behind them they had everyone else paying attention to them and then they released something that was going to connect with that audience too and um, a lot of times it works a lot of times it doesn't you know and i definitely think that's the way though you know as an artist bro you made me think about like once you had that niche rolling right people are rocking with you it'll be people who didn't like you to first listen people are going to start doing double takes. Mm -hmm. Like I've seen, I, I could just think of certain executives in my mind where, where they're like, yo man, I heard this dude music and I just thought he was trash. But like now they're actively trying to figure out like, what do you like about this guy? Like what do mm -hmm. people like? About this? So they're starting to search because they don't understand it, but they see enough motion where they know there's something real there. And mm -hmm. now you realize, well, maybe there's something I don't get. I might be the problem because other people get it. And that's kind of the power of like just focusing on your people, you know? Um, yeah, I agree with that. Cause a lot of times, honestly, the people who are in charge of music, they don't really know anything. You know, a lot of times they, their, their suggestions, like I work with a lot of labels and stuff. <laughs> they don't know what's going on. Like people are like, they're all looking at trying to hire someone to figure it out. You know, that's the situation they're in. So personally, I feel like the people know everything. Like if, if there's, a, if there's, 10,000 people saying someone is like really, really, really good. And he's like the next, you know, 
big artist, I feel like that's going to get another 20,000 people interested and then so on and so on. It's just going to keep growing and getting to the point where, um, you know, every everyone's behind it. That's how I look at it. Yeah, it's like the, the labels and professionals and the music. Well, even just, how do I, I guess, how do you bunch all of them? You just call them music professionals, I guess? Yeah, the executives. Much. Servicemen. Well, because yeah. they're not all executives. Okay, so the professionals. Yeah, professionals. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So generally speaking, <laughs> most music professionals' roles is to optimize the present, not create the future. So they're not necessarily looking for that. There are some people who are literally looking for the future, like you'll have some A&Rs or people who are younger just trying to get on. So it's like, I got I, the only way I can break through or the fastest way to break through is be attached to the future before the people who got the power right in the present can get onto it themselves. Mm -hmm. So they got to come to me. But I think like that's what leads to situations like this last tweet I want to go over um, for this conversation. You said if you look at any artist that's hot right now, they got a lot of hate when they first started out. Young Thug. Travis Scott, Amigos, et cetera. Now they are considered pioneers of the current sound. So don't be discouraged if someone says your music isn't good. Stay consistent. Yeah, actually, like, I, I'm working with some artists right now that are, like, taking off and, like, some of them, you know, use auto-tune and stuff like that. And, like, there are people, a certain group of people like their music, but then everyone, a lot of people don't like it. They're like, yo, this is too much auto-tune. This is trash whatever you know but I, I feel like in every situation that's going to happen because once your music starts blowing up and um, a lot of people start coming across it um, they might not be the intended audience right away or they might not understand the type of music you're making in that in that moment but it, you know as it is is bubbling and growing and, and more people are promoting it and they hear it in in in, in in restaurants, clubs, or whatever, and it kind of grows on them, they become fans of it um, eventually. You know, once people hear something over and over again, they end, end up starting to like it because, um, you know, that's, a, in my opinion, it's just, it's just all about finding out who your audience is and then making, making that, making uh, music for that audience and, you know, just kind of promoting yourself in a way where um, pe people who haven't heard of you are going to be curious to who you are and just kind of keep seeing you over and over again. And eventually your music is going to become, you know, something that um, they like if people people don't like a lot of the music that they hear early on, you know, and it's not necessarily mean as good It's just that not what they're accustomed to. But if you keep putting it out there and there's people behind it that, you um, you know, promote the music and, and share you and tell you that you're good. And, and uh, you know, more and more people are going to like it as well. For sure. For sure. Well, hey, man, I appreciate you hopping on, bro. This has been such a dope conversation. Really should have you on again, man, if you're down for it. But everybody, make sure y'all follow Promo God at promo underscore God 33. Um, is there any thoughts that you want to leave us with or, you know, or something that you feel like people should reach out to you for? Uh, the only thing I would say is if you're an up and coming artist, um, I'll try to figure out a way to minimize the cost, like what it costs to be you, you know, cause a lot of times artists will come and they'll like try to have a big, you know, fancy look like gold chains and this, they want to look like an artist that costs, hundred thousand dollars to maintain just kind of the, the look you know but I, personally i think you need to come in with, with without any of that you need to come in as someone like that's um tr trying to connect like a normal person you know come off as someone like that people can connect with that people can relate to and just put yourself out figure a way to promote yourself without spending a lot of money you know especially with content and stuff like that figure out something about you that connects with people and create a bunch of content around that thing and put that out consistently and use that to promote your music. So in my opinion, I feel like artists need to get in the place where um, they create a brand for themselves that doesn't necessarily cost a lot to maintain every, every month. You know, you don't want um, to have to rely on spending money on ads just to get seen. You know, you want something else about you to connect with people so that when you put that content out and um, people agree with it and, you know, they like it because there's similar people to you that have a similar personality 
those are the people that are going to ultimately listen to your music and make it blow up. And that is not going to cost you a lot compared to, you know, running ads and, you know, doing info center campaigns and stuff like that. If you have your own following and people like you, like you have all the control as far as marketing, you know, you can release anything and the people gravitate towards it. You won't have to necessarily figure a way to campaign for it, if that makes sense. 100%, man. Facts. 100%. Man, appreciate you having you on. Appreciate having you on once again, man. Yeah, thank you, man. I'm, I'm Brain Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And this is yet another episode of No Labels Necessary. Peace.